What's up guys, Kudokun here, keeping up with the Senki Zesho videos. Since DX actually isn't up on Trade Cards Online right now, I might take a break from this after today and uh, just do DX later on in the month, but we will have to see what happens. I don't like to do too many Weiss videos in a row, but I do kind of want to get this finished up, but I don't know. We'll have to take a look later. For right now though, Simple Gear GX, four cards from each color, and let's get started. We're going to start with Magical Girl Hibiki. All of the characters got a level 3 that's 11,000 and has a pretty big beefy effect. This looks wordy, but I'll explain it. When it comes into play, you heal. And its climax combo is everybody gets plus 2,000 power, and if your damage is cancelled, you deal 1 damage after the damage is cancelled. And that's pretty much it. It's a really great way to finish out a game. You drop it, you drop its climax, and even if all of your damage is cancelled, you still deal one damage on top of it to pressure your opponent. So, honestly, if your opponent has five or six damage on the clock already, you drop this and you pretty much win the game. One restriction to these level threes that they did keep in place, because this is of course Simple Gear and they've got to put restrictions on everything, is you have to have played an Ignite module at least once during the game, all of the Ignite modules remove themselves from the game, and they all have some kind of one-time use effect, and each color has a different one so you can pick and choose which ones you like. So that's it, really. It's the only restriction. You have to play at least one Ignite module, and once you do, it removes itself from the game, and if you haven't played one, then this kills itself at the end of your turn. You can tell that this is really where they perfected balancing power and limitation. Like, in the other sets, they didn't have the balls to make the cards very powerful, even though they had such strict limitations. And in this one, they did give the card some limitations, but they made the card more powerful to compensate, which is how it should be. Next up is a level 2 assist, Hibiki Skinship. It's by level assist, and you can pay one stock and rest one of your other music characters to give one of your characters plus one soul. Not the most powerful assist I've seen at level 2, but it has great synergy with the level 3, because if you give a 2 soul attacker an extra soul to go up to 3 soul and you attack in, and your damage is cancelled, then you still get the 1 damage, so it's a lot less punishing. You can also, of course, just use this on a level 0 or a 1 soul attacker to give it 2 soul and just have it swing in. Here's a new face we haven't seen yet. Terashima Cooking Practice. This card is actually here to represent a set of cards, all with cooking practice in their name, because they go together to form a pretty funny level 1 combo. If you can get all of the cooking practice characters in play, then it creates a pretty hard field to break. This one, I think, is the most important, so it's the one that I decided to include here because it's got Encore, so it can stay alive the longest, and it's also in 8 thousand power attacker during your turn. That's pretty big on its own, but the fact that it also gets more bonuses from Ando and Itaba is just beautiful. If you're not that focused on Hibiki cards, this could be a great way to set up your level 1 if you're running some kind of mono yellow, or even if you just want to pair yellow with something else without using Hibiki, this could be a really nice way to just have a good level 1 presence without messing with your level 2 or 3. Just using the 3 cooking characters will give you enough yellow in your deck that you don't have to splash in any other yellow, and once it's done and out of the way, you can move on to whatever your level 2 strategy is. Hmm, I don't think that's what Beef Stroganoff looks like, but then again, I am just a dumb American, so what do I know? Beast Stroganoff is the event we're going to look at. It's a level 3 event, and it costs 3, which is a <laughs> pretty beefy cost. <clears throat> I said it's a uh, pretty beefy cost. Alright, I tried. But the payoff is pretty phenomenal, and honestly, I could see this card being teched in at 1 or 2 just to win you a game. You can choose up to 3 of your opponent's characters and return them to the hand, so if your opponent has a full row of 3 characters and they're pretty strong, chances are your opponent spent a lot of resources to get those 3 characters on the field. Well, level 3, you drop this, you return their entire front row to their hand, and then you swing in with a bunch of level 0s and they each deal 2 soul damage. Then on your opponent's turn, they've got a bunch of stuff in their hand that they have to pay for again. Even if they don't really have to pay very much to get their stuff back on the field, it's still kind of worth it because, honestly, just getting one turn where you can swing into a completely empty field is great. 
especially, once again, with our level 3 that gives us 1 damage if they happen to cancel. Even if your opponent doesn't have a full row of characters, you can just return the back row if you really want to, I don't know. Okay, so I lied, it turns out that green doesn't have an ignite module, <laughs> whoops. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Kirika and Chirabe have each other, they don't need an ignite module. So Kirika is a level 2 as long as you have 6 or more climaxes in your discard pile, and it also gets plus 1000 for each of your other Shirabe the conclusion reached. Uh, but it's still a 9,000. <laughs> Why didn't you guys just make her a 10,000? Uh, when she's put into play, you can draw two, discard one, and she also clock kicks if you have her climax in play, which I guess is a fair makeup. I could see this being good, but I think you have to pair this up with another color in order to get its full benefit. Like, I, I think this is the weakest that any of the colors got out of this. Also, the conclusion reached Shirabe is fine, but it's not really good enough that we're going to look at it here. At least the other level 3 Kirika searched her Shirabe. In this case, you don't even get the search. Like I said before, I haven't seen the show, I don't know anything about what's going on here, but there are all these new characters called alchemy characters, and this is the level 3 that goes in that style of gameplay. The alchemy characters all remove themselves from the game when they die, which compresses your deck by a whole lot, and then once they're all removed from the game, this gets minus one level and minus two cost in your hand. And then of course the balancer to that is if you aren't able to pull that off, then this is a level three and it costs three, which means it costs more than it usually would. See, this is a decent way to balance things out. It's risk-reward. If you can pull it off, then this is a great card. If you can't pull it off, then this actually costs more than it normally would, and you don't get that much benefit off of it. When it comes into play, it heals, and you can pay one stock and put an alchemy character from your memory back into your discard pile to give this plus 1500 power and make it so it cannot be targeted until the end of your opponent's turn. This effect is great because you can pay any amount of stock you want to and return any number of cards that you want to during a single turn, so you can make this potentially as powerful as it needs to be. Or you can just burn it off slowly and get that protection effect every turn. This is a great answer to clock kickers, to cards that would normally return you to the hands, or cards that would return you to stock. Alchemy looks like a really fun way to play Symphogear. This is going to be on my list of deck ideas for sure when I start building. Shirabe New Life is a level 2, 1 stock, and if you have at least 3 other music characters, it's a base 8500. Now it's Climax Combo. <clears throat> when you attack, if you have Unchanged Pair in your Climax area, you can reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's a music character... You can put that card in your hands, and this gets plus 6,000 power. Woo! Woo! Shirabi does not want a piece of you. She wants to destroy you until there's not a piece left. Plus 6,000 power means you're a base 14,500 if you have the plus 1,000 boost. On top of that, you get to draw a card, and it's free. Something is going to die as soon as you pull this off, and it's pretty awesome. Courage to Confront Kirika is a card that pairs up with Courage to Confront Shirabe, as you can imagine. It's a little weak, but it has potential. If you have a Shirabe in play, this is a 5500, and the Shirabe that goes with this card, Courage to Confront, has plus 500 and Super Encore given to all of your Courage to Confront Kirikas. So with one of those in play, this is a 6000 with Super Encore that costs zero stock, and that's what makes it so interesting. If you're running a type of deck that needs the stock conservation, this is a really solid way to run the deck, especially if you're doing something where you want to gather up stock, not necessarily to spend it on anything, but to compress your deck. Like this is your base level 1 on top of the deck compression from Alchemy means that you could potentially, okay, potentially deck refresh on like 25 cards, and if 8 of those cards are climaxes, your opponent is never getting through with an attack. Of course, that's all just theory crafting. I digress. It's not guaranteed to happen. I'm just saying this is potentials we're talking about. But enough of alchemy. Back to this. It also has an effect that lets you rest a music character to give this plus 1,000 power during the turn. If you have two Shirabes in the back row, then this is a base 6,500 if they're both the Courage to Confront Shirabes. And it has Super Encore for free, and you can rest both of them to make this an 8,500. 
8500 Super Encore costs zero stock. It's a very solid strategy that you should look into if you're running green in your deck. Slipping into Red's DMs, we're going to start with Bond with Kohai Chris, which is our level 3. If you have its climax in play and it attacks, you can deal 1 damage to your opponent. Oh, oh, that's just like Haruhi. Oh, Chris, I knew you were my favorite. During your opponent's turn, if you do not cancel the damage your opponent deals, you can look at the top card of your deck and decide to put it back on top or put it on the bottom. Pretty much just a way to stop your opponent from defeating you in one turn by trying to make your next damage cancel come a little bit sooner. And then, of course, if you don't have an Ignite module, she kills herself. Red's Ignite module is probably the one you're most commonly going to use, so I don't see that happening anytime soon. Honestly, this card is just all around really solid, and what? What's that? What's that I see down there? It are, are you hiding something from me, Chris? Is there something else awesome about you that's not listed in your card text? Uh, uh, oh, Chris! Coming in with the triple soul icons! That's my girl! That's how you know she's on top. She's coming in like, oh, I'm just gonna hit you for three damage. Oh, and you're gonna take one damage before that, because I feel like it. I knew I was right to put you on the waifu Chris list. I just knew it. What's that? All of your level threes only have two soul icons? What, is your deck from 1995? The rest of Wise Swords is playing checkers, and Chris was playing chess the whole time! Following off that amazing Chris level 3, we have an arguably even better Maria level 3 with Self Brilliance. When you put Maria in play from your hand or through change, you can reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's a music character, your opponent takes one damage. Maria doesn't even want to wait until the battle phase, she just wants you to take that one damage right now. With Maria, you could win the game without ever even hitting the battle phase. And when you attack, you can take two characters from your discard pile, shuffle them back into your deck to get an extra 1,000 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. If you know for a fact you're on the last or second to last turn, I could see this being pretty useful, but honestly, if you don't think you're going to finish out the game before you get another deck refresh, that could be a little bit costly. Because keep in mind, every time you add a card to your deck that isn't a Climax, you're making your Climaxes further and further apart and just adding more damage to your deck. But it's optional, so it doesn't really matter, and of course its last effect is having Ignite Module or Suicide. Wait a second. I smell something. What is that? Huh? 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 Oh! We got another three soul attacker! Red has everything, okay? Red is the best color. I will take absolutely no substitutes. Red Simpho Gear is the best thing ever. Chris, special training by the beachside is a level one suicider that is free, and if your damage gets cancelled, you can pay one to salvage a character. It's simple, but it's elegant. It's a free attacker at level 1 that automatically kills a character, and if your damage gets cancelled, it salvages a card for the one stock that you would have gotten. Honestly, there's nothing really complicated or fancy about this card, I just think it's a really solidly built card for the deck. Last red we'll look at today is Maria, Bearer of Air Get Lom. Its climax combo lets you pay one stock and clock yourself for one damage to send one of your opponent's level 1 or lowers to the waiting room. In addition to that, this gets plus 1,000 for the turn. This is definitely okay. In most situations, it's not going to be the greatest play, but it is a great way to just very easily get rid of an Encore character. And it opens up a spot for one of your characters to attack into that they might not have been strong enough to attack into before. On top of that, if this card gets reversed, your opponent can take one character from your discard pile and put it on top of your deck. This is great but you have to know when to use it because it can be a noob trap. Honestly, the best thing you can get out of this is if you attack into a character and you die so that when you get reversed, your opponent can choose a character and put it on top of your deck and then you just trigger that character for your next attack to make sure you're not triggering into a climax. If it happens during your opponent's turn, then you're essentially just giving them one free damage for no reason. So. It's a little bit tough, but you can find a way to make this work in your deck if you need it to get rid of Encore characters. Blue! Oh my god, what happened to you? You look amazing! You're a real, viable color now! You guys remember in Hercules how Hercules was just like a skinny white kid, and then he meets Danny DeVito, and all of a sudden, through rigorous training, he becomes a Greek god? Blue has successfully made the Greek God transformation. I honestly think Blue got the best deal out of GX. 
Let's start with my girl, Subasa. No need for sword. By the way, you're holding a sword. That is a misleading name. If you have two other no need for sword Tsubasas in your waiting room, then this gets minus one level in your hand, which there are so many ways to put two of these cards in your discard pile and have the other two in your hand. This can be done easily and consistently. And it didn't have to sacrifice any power to get it. It's still an 11,000, even though it can come out on level two. At the beginning of your opponent's draw phase, if this is on your center stage, you can choose one of your characters, including this character, and give it plus 4,000. So during your opponent's turn, this can either be an 11,000 with another character getting plus 4,000, or this can be a 15,000 big booty wall that your opponent has to get over. I know people say power doesn't really matter at level 3, but this card is essentially immortal. I cannot think of a decent way over this, and it can all start happening at level 2. If you're still using the cross drives from the last set, then it's great for that too. And then of course, if you don't have an Ignite module, she commits seppuku with the sword she doesn't need. At level 2, we've got a back row character, Yatsuhiro Kazunari. Daddy really brings the power. He gives all of your Tsubasas, all of them, not in front, not one of them, all of them plus 1500 power. So you get two of these bad boys in the back row, Bam! That's plus 3,000 power to all of your front rows if they're all Subasa. This is great for the card game, but I am sensing daddy issues for the character. Definitely one or two daddy issues. Now this is obviously great with your level 3, because if you get two of these in play, then it's a natural 14,000, and then a, oh, dare I say it, 18,000 during your opponent's turn if you choose to give itself its own bonus. But where this would really shine is if there was a decent level 2 Tsubasa we could also run. Tsubasa, Thought Sword's father, is a decent level 2 Tsubasa we can run. What a wacky coincidence! See, I'm being facetious, but this card is legitimately called Thoughts Towards Father. Definitely some daddy issues. I feel like I nailed it there. It's also funny because you can call this card Thought Tsubasa and it still works. But I digress. During your opponent's turn, he gets plus 500 for each of your other music characters. Unfortunately, Dad did not learn to play any instruments, so he's not a music character, but with that plus 1500 boost, it doesn't even matter. You get two of those bad boys, and you have yourself a one-cost 10,500 on the field. Then if you happen to get three of these Subasas in play during your opponent's turn, it gets another plus 1000 from having the other two in play, so it's an 11,500 for one stock. It also has a Climax combo, where if you attack and you have its Climax, you can pay one stock to heal. So, like I said before, if you do have three of these guys in play, you just attack with three characters, you heal three from the clock, and during your opponent's turn, they've got to deal with some 11,500s. That is some bullcrap. The last card we'll be looking at today is Inherited Life. We really didn't look at that many events today, but we're going to end it off on one. Choose one of your characters and it gets plus 4,000 during your turn and during your opponent's next turn, and then this card goes to memory for one stock. For one stock, this card's a little bit crazy, because not only do you get 4,000 for two turns, but this card also goes to the memory, so it doesn't mess with your deck consistency. Some people might argue that a backup would be a lot better than this card, but Personally, I disagree. I think this is great because during your opponent's turn is when all of your characters get their biggest power spikes, so I don't feel like you need stuff that uh, reacts to your opponent attacking to you as much. I think it's much more valuable to have something that can step over your opponent's cards during your turn. You could splash this into green with your Clock Kicker Killica, you could splash this into red with your Damagers, or of course, Probably for the first time in Symphogear history, you could put this in your mono blue viable deck. It takes your normally defensive only strategy and adds some offense to it, and I just think that's wonderful. Here we are at the end of another Symphogear set review, and what do I think of it this time? The difference between this set and the other two sets really is night and day. Somebody in my comment section on the last one compared this to like <laughs> the Stone Age versus the 1990s, and I can really see where they're coming from here. While I feel like green sort of struggled a little bit, and yellow got some stuff but really didn't get as much as the other two colors, I feel like red really got the game finishers that they needed for red to be a very, very powerful set. And blue, man, I cannot believe how powerful blue got in this set. Honestly, 
the way that this set of Symphal Gear feels is what I wish all of the sets of Symphal Gear felt like. And on top of all of these great competitive viable decks that I see, I also see some really fun deck strategies. Like, Noise didn't get anything in this, but Noise already had so much going for it that I feel like you just have to splash some extra green into it to make it work. There was one Noise card that I didn't look at, but it wasn't really that great, to be honest. Like I said before, sadly, the other set is not on Trade Cards Online. I think it's called DX, so we'll have to see what's going on there. I might go ahead and put it in myself if I have some free time on Thursday when I'm building the decks, or I might go ahead and put that set review off until next week and just build with what we have, or, or I could go ahead and just get the set review out of the way and let it just be over. Right now, the decks I'm feeling are Yellow Red Aggro, a uh, Tsubasa Daddy Issues, a Noise deck, and an Alchemy deck. And then, of course, whatever happens in DX to change my mind. But really, that's about it. If you were looking at my other Symphal Gear set reviews and you thought maybe Symphal Gear wasn't something that you'd be interested in, this set changes everything. Start with this set and maybe add a couple of things from the other sets to fill in some spots. Don't forget to check back in on Friday to see the set in action, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Maybe. 90% sure I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!